This series begins by showing the battle of the Five Sect Alliance versus the Sun Moon Sect which has been fighting for centuries, only to dominate the martial arts world. The scene moved a few years after that night. It was seen that a group of people came to a village with many corpses lying there. Seeing this, a man named Zuo, who was the leader of the Sung Shan Sect, said that this heinous act must have been committed by the Sun Moon Sect. Zuo then initiated the Five Sect Alliance to meet and intended to attack the Sun Moon Sect for revenge. His words were apparently refuted by Zhang Zhe, the wife of the leader of the Huashan Sect, who said that the people in the village might have died from an epidemic. Hearing that, Zuo was angry at her statement, so he took out a sword move that could tear down a house. Seeing this, the leader of the Huashan Sect, Yue, apologized to Zuo because his wife had said so carelessly. After Zuo and the others left, Yue warned Zhang Zhe not to say anything reckless. He said that the Five Sect Alliance hated the Sun Moon Sect and had been enemies for a long time. Because of that, Yue was afraid that the Huashan Sect would be looked down upon by the other sects because it seemed to defend the Sun Moon Sect, which was an evil sect. But Zhangze remained true to her words, believing that the villagers died from a plague. The scene then switches, showing a man named Dong Fong from the Sun Moon Sect about to face the leader of the Sun Moon Sect, who is meditating in a cave. He reports that the Five Sect Alliance is gathering to attack them. Still, his leader actually orders him to take care of the Five Sect Alliance's matters himself without disturbing him, who is meditating. Not long after, Dong Fong met the leader's wife, whose name was Ren. They seemed to be chatting while walking towards her house until finally, a maid appeared who reported that her daughter had been kidnapped. Hearing that, Ren suspected that the culprit must be the Five Sect Alliance and left Dong Fong. However, the kidnappers were not people from the Five Sect Alliance but Dong Fong. On the other hand, the Five Sect Alliance had already arrived at the foot of the mountain where the Sun Moon Sect was. However, the Five Sect Alliance seemed to be having a hard time getting up the mountain because the mountain had lots of traps. Not long after, Ren and her bodyguards came down from the mountain and met the Five Sect Alliance. She accused the Five Sect Alliance of having kidnapped her daughter. However, Zuo denied her accusations and ordered her to tell him the way to the Sun Moon Sect headquarters on top of the mountain. Since Ren refused to tell, a fight between them was inevitable. Zuo's strength was far above hers and her bodyguards, so Ren was defeated and taken prisoner by the Five Sect Alliance. That night, Zhangze secretly helped Ren escape by making the guards unconscious. She convinced Ren that the Five Sect Alliance had not kidnapped her daughter. After that, Ren ran away. Soon after, Yue appeared and scolded Zhangze for releasing Ren. Then, Yue injured his own thigh. Not long after, Zuo and the other Alliance leaders came. Yue lied that Ren was released by the Sun Moon Sect people and was injured because he was attacked by the Sun Moon Sect people. In the middle of her escape, Ren suddenly met Dong Fong in the forest. Afterward, Dong Fong finally confessed that it was all his plan, so the Sun Moon Sect's leader left his meditation and fought against the Five Sect Alliance. Afterward, Dong Fong killed Ren with one strike and took her body to his leader's meditation place. When he found out that Ren had been killed, the leader named Wo Xing came out. Then he took her body and said he would avenge the actions of the Five Sect Alliance. The next day, Wo Xing went down the mountain and encountered the Five Sect Alliance in the forest. An angry Woshing said that the Five Sect Alliance, known as a righteous sect, actually played sneaky with his wife and kidnapped his daughter just to defeat the Sun Moon Sect and rule the martial world. He continued to challenge all the leaders of the Five Sect Alliance to fight with him. One by one, the leaders of the Five Sect Alliance attacked Woshing but were defeated by him. Zuo then attacked Woshing and fought fiercely until he released his ultimate technique. Zuo knew that he would die because of Woshing's technique. But then, Woshing suddenly cancelled his attack, realizing that Zuo would die if he continued fighting. After that, Woshing pretended to be generous to the Five Sect Alliance and left. Soon after, Zuo, who possessed the highest level of ability, was finally appointed as the leader of the Five Sect Alliance by the other leaders to preside over their fight against the Sun Moon Sect in the future. On the other hand, Woshing looked sad when he washed away his wife's body in a lake. He promised Ren that he would avenge all the actions of the Five Sect Alliance, but suddenly he vomited blood because of his internal injuries from the fight earlier. The next day, Woshing received advice from his subordinates to be careful when using his ultimate technique because this move had side effects on his own body. Not long after, Dong Fong brought Woshing's daughter. Then Woshing channeled his energy to her. Suddenly, Dong Fong attacked him from behind, knowing he was injured. Dong Fong then ordered the soldiers to stop him. This also made the two leaders of the Sun Moon Sect named Xu Yang and Wen Sheng come to see their leader's condition, but Dong Fong said that Wo Xing had gone mad since his wife's death. The scene then changes when Xu Yang finds Wo Xing's daughter, Ying. There she said that all of this was the work of Dong Fong, who deliberately attacked her father until he went berserk uncontrollably. Hearing this, Xu Yang covered her mouth and asked her not to talk to anyone so she would not be killed. Not long after, Dong Fong was appointed the leader of the Sun Moon Sect to replace Wo Xing. Everyone in the Sun Moon Sect congratulated him, including Chu Yang, who came with Ying. 
She then gives Dong Fong a gift in the form of the Sunflower Book. She recalled her past story related to the Sunflower Scripture. In the past, Ying asked her father why he had never studied the Sunflower Book and preferred to study the Sisangapa technique. However, Wo Xin did not answer her questions and only ordered her to guard the Sunflower Book. The scene changes, showing Dong Fong reading the Sunflower Book. Not long after, he summoned Wen Sheng, then ordered Wen Sheng to bring women to his room. At first, Wen Sheng was confused by his request, but Wen Sheng still carried out his order. Sometime later, some guards started gossiping about Dong Fong spending time with women. Not only that, but Wen Sheng was also shocked when he saw his leader dressed like a woman. Dong Fong then attacked Wen Sheng with a new move. He said that the move was learned from the Sunflower Scripture. He was sure that if he continued studying Sunflower for a few years, he would become an unbeatable warrior. Dong Fong's identity is still a mystery. Whether he is a woman disguised as a man or a man who turned into a woman because he studied the Sunflower Book. Ten years later, it appears that several students are bullying their teachers. On the other hand, Yue, studying swordsmanship, suddenly remembered his late teacher's message about the PZ Qian Fa swordsmanship from the Sunflower Scripture, an heirloom scripture belonging to the Huashan sect. Yue turns out to be assigned to find the Sunflower Scripture to complete PZ Qian Fa's rudimentary swordsmanship. Not long after, Zhang Ze came to see him and reported that the leader had decided to resign. Hearing this, Yue went to the teacher and persuaded him. But the teacher seems unable to teach naughty students at the college. Yue then assigned two male students, Ling and Lu Daio, to buy some equipment. He also sent his daughter, Ling Shan, to accompany them. Not long after, three of them arrived in town and seemed to be enjoying a show when Lu Daio signaled Ling to leave. Then he asked Ling Shan's permission and used the pretext of buying food. The scene changes and shows an embroidered house. The pimp introduces the most beautiful woman in the brothel, who turns out to be Dong Fong. Not long after, Dong Fong was seen entertaining a man. Apparently, he disguised himself as a hostess to find information about the plot to kill him. After receiving information from the man, Dong Fong killed him, and he died instantly. On the other hand, Ling and Lu Daio apparently both left Ling Shan. They arrived at the brothel to drink wine and cakes. Meanwhile, the pimp was seen being protested by two men from the Qing Chen sect for not getting a beautiful and attractive hostess. Not long after, Dong Fong came down, and her beauty made all the men stare at her in awe, including Ling, Lu Daio, and the two men from Qing Chen sect. Ling then invites Lu Daio to follow two men from Qing Chen sect because he suspects them. They apparently secretly followed Dong Fong, but before they could even touch him, Ling stopped them by warning them not to hurt a woman. In the end, Ling and Lu Daio fought against the two men from the Qing Chen sect. But suddenly, one of the Qing Chen sect throws an explosion which makes Ling hug Dong Fong so he won't be hit by the explosion. The explosion made Ling Shan come and managed to find Ling and Lu Daio. They managed to drive the two men out of Qing Chen sect, but Ling is distraught when he finds out that Dong Fong has already left. Dong Fong seemed to have returned to his base and talked with a maid who gave him tea. Not long after, he fainted after drinking the tea. The maid then met a man and said their plan worked. Soon after, Dong Fong came to catch them. It turned out that he only pretended to faint, and then he killed them. The next day, Yue received a letter of reprimand from the leader of Qing Chen because of what Ling did last night. While Ling himself was teaching Ling Shan the sword technique that he got from the Qing Chen sect when he fought yesterday. Yue then met Ling and reprimanded him for practicing sword techniques from other sects. He told Ling to go to Qing Chen sect to apologize. After that, he said to Ling that the move technique Ling had practiced earlier was apparently similar to the PZ Qian Fa sword technique, which he had not mastered. Hearing that, Ling was told to go to the Qing Chen sect. However, Ling Shan looked sulky because she couldn't come with him. The next day, Ling went to Qing Chen sect with Law, but when he got there, the students told them to wait in front of the Qing Chen sect's temple gate. After some time, Ling, tired of waiting, decided to ride a giant crane near them and fly across the mountains. Meanwhile, in the Qing Chen sect temple, their leader, Chang Hai, was seen watching the students practice. Then he told his students that they were learning the PZ Qian Fa sword technique, which was the demon-defeating sword technique from Lin's family whose knowledge came from the Sunflower Scripture. Chang Hai said that the Qing Chen sect had a past grudge against Lin's family and wanted to take the Sunflower book from them. His evil intentions were overheard by Ling, thus making Ling trick him and his students by dropping beehives. Unfortunately, Chang Hai caught Ling's action and knocked him down with his technique. Ling then confessed that he was from the Huasan sect to deliver a letter from his leader and an apology. Hearing that, he accepted Ling's apology, but Chang Hai kicked him and warned him to be polite next time. After returning from Qing Chen's sect, Ling complained to Yue about Chang Hai's treatment. However, Yue did not defend him because his behavior of peeking at people while they were practicing was inappropriate. Ling then practiced the PZ Chen Fa sword technique that he saw in Qing Chen sect, thus making Yue think about the relationship between Hua San sect and Qing Chen sect, and Lin's family was in the demon-conquering sword technique. 
Not long after, Yui assigned Ling to Hang Mountain to prepare for Leader Liu's retirement from the martial world. After that, Ling meets Ling Shan, who returns to sulk at her father, who always gives tasks to him. Soon after, Ling Shan invites Ling to escape from the Hua San sect and go on their own journey so they can always be together. Hearing that, he agreed with her idea. They had even prepared a plan to escape. At night, Zhang Ze came to see Ling and gave money and advice to him so that he would always be careful in carrying out his duties. Hearing that touched his heart, so Ling cancelled his intention to run away with Ling Shan. Then he meets Ling Shan and convinces her to cancel their intention because it will only make her parents sad. The next day, Ling had already gone to carry out his duties. Ling Shan then complained to Zhang Ze, saying she was bored because she lived in the Huashan sect temple. Hearing this, Zhang Ze finally permitted her daughter to join and investigate the secret of the demon conquering sword. The scene moved to a ship. A man named Lin Pingji was seen who was almost killed because of his father's trap when he was about to open Lin's family's secret chest. Luckily, his mother came at the right time and stopped the weapon in the trap. However, Pingji seems annoyed with his mother because he was not told about his family's secret. Then he decided to climb onto the ship's deck with his two bodyguards to relieve his anger. Afterward, he sees Ling Shan, who is watching him from the water. Feeling suspicious, Pigi jumps into the water and attacks Ling Shan, but he realizes that Ling Shan is just an ordinary person and cannot defend herself. Then he saves her and escorts her to the Hua San sect, where he meets Lao, disguised as Ling Shan's father. Shortly after, Lao thanked Pigi for saving Ling Shan, but suddenly two men from the Qing Chen sect came and seduced Ling Shan. Knowing that made Pigi angry, he fought against one of the Qing Chen sect to defend her. Unfortunately, his strength was no match for the man from Qing Chen, so he was driven into a corner. When he was about to be defeated, Pigi took out his dagger and instantly stabbed the man to death. The man who died apparently was the son of the leader of the Qing Chen sect. Shortly after, another man runs away and promises to take revenge on Pigi. In the evening, Pigi returned to his ship after burying the leader of the Qing Chen sect's son's body. Then he talked to his father, Zhenan, who finally told him about the book Pizi Qi and Fa as his family's legacy, which consists of 72 moves. Zhenan said there was still a set of moves that he couldn't master, which was still a mystery. Not long after, he received a report that two of his bodyguards had died, which made Pigi suspect that the culprit must be from the Qing Chen sect and shocked him. Pigi then confessed to what he had done and escorted his parents to where he buried the body of the son of the leader of the Qing Chen sect. Zhenan, who was worried, took his son and wife back to their ship for fear of being attacked. When they arrived on the ship, all of their bodyguards had been killed by intruders, leaving only Pigi and his parents alone. Not long after, the intruder set off an explosion and made Pigi and his parents get into the barrel, and their ship was destroyed by the explosion. Zhenan and Fizi apparently survived and were running away in the middle of the forest, but the Qing Chen sect students also caught up with them and brought a woman whose face was covered in black cloth. The Qing Chen sect students said that the woman was Pigi's mother and threatened to kill her if Pigi and his father didn't want to give up. Pigi, who was provoked, decided to leave, but the woman who had been killed was not his mother. Then Zhenan decided to come out to save his son. Soon after, his wife also showed up to save Pigi, but he had already been caught and threatened with death, so they gave up. On the way, the Qing Chen sect students who captivated Lin's family found a ritual in the cave, apparently held by the Huasan sect, to save Lin's family. Pigi was also appointed to play magic and was invited to enter the box. Apparently, he was asked to escape, but the Qing Chen sect students discovered this and made the Huasan sect escape using smoke. The person who saved Pigi turns out to be Ling Shan. It was there that he realized that Ling Shan had mastered martial arts. She then uses Pigi's clothes to lure the Qing Chen sect students into chasing after her. Luckily, Yue also comes to save his daughter and drives away the Qing Chen sect students. After that, Yue and Law went to monitor Chang Hai and his students near the coast, who were seen looking for something in the wreckage of Lin's family's ship. Yue said that Chang Hai was looking for the book of Pizi Qi and Fa, using his son's death as an excuse to attack Lin's family. Then he ordered Lao to follow Ling to Hang Mountain while he would still monitor Chang Hai's movements. The scene then switches, showing Dong Fang sitting on his throne. He had heard about Liu's resignation event. Moreover, Chu Yang would be attending the event, even though he was one of the leaders of the Sun Moon sect. Meanwhile, Ling arrived at Hang Mountain and saw a nun from the North Hang Song sect named Yi Lin. She apparently was carving a Buddha statue on a cliff, but suddenly she fell due to slipping until a man named Bo Wang appeared to save her. After that, Yi Lin thanked Bo Wang and was about to say goodbye, but he took her captive because he intended to make Yi Lin his wife. Seeing this, Ling, who felt that Bo Wang was stronger than him, came up with an idea to pretend to be Chang Hai. Unfortunately, the idea failed to frighten Bo Wang. The scene then changes, showing Yi Lin dressed for a forced marriage to Bo Wang. Ling, who had been secretly following them, suddenly appeared on the roof of Yi Lin's room to save her. At the same time, it turns out that Dong Fang has also come to Heng Son sect. 
Dong Fan, who was in disguise, decided to stop by after being invited by the locals to attend Bo Guang's wedding. Not long after, Bo Guang entered Yi Ling's room, but when he removed the veil that covered her face, apparently, it was Ling who replaced her. Knowing that Bo Guang was angry and fought with him, Dong Fang, who saw this, realized that Ling was the man who had defended him, but he chose to witness the fight rather than help Ling. It turned out that Bo Guang was much stronger than Ling and repeatedly injured him and knocked him down. However, Ling always got up and showed his unyielding spirit. Even though Bo Guang had no intention of killing Ling, he managed to seriously injure Ling. Fortunately, Ling could still stand up and instead make him give up because he was tired of serving Ling. Soon after, Dong Fang approaches Ling and taunts him to fight for the woman Ling just met. Meanwhile, he feels that Dong Fang is the woman he saved, but then Dong Fang denied his words. After that, Dong Fang took Ling to see a doctor for treatment. Then, they strolled through the city at night, and their journey ended at a meadow. From that moment, they get to know each other, and Ling is also told about the dispute between the Five Sect Alliance and the Sun Moon Sect. After that, Dong Fang plays with his hair tie in front of Ling, whose movements are like playing with a sword. When his hair was accidentally loosed, Ling again felt that Dong Fang was very much like the woman he had saved, and even he doubted that Dong Fang was a man. However, Dong Fang still denies it, which makes Ling annoyed, and he decides to sleep. The next day, he wakes up and doesn't know that Dong Fang is gone. Suddenly, he remembers his assignment and rushes back to the city. The scene changed, showing Piji walking aimlessly because he was worried about his parents. Not long after, he met two Ching Chen sect students and overheard their conversation about the book PZ Chi and Fa from Lin's family that they had not been able to find. Hearing this, he understood why his family was being targeted, none other than because of the book. Then he disguises himself as a maid and pranks the two Ching Chi sect students. After that, he ran away to hide. Not long after, PZ came out again to look for the two Ching Chen sect students, but he was kidnapped and put into a horse-drawn carriage. On the other hand, Yi Lin, who had survived thanks to Ling, also intended to find her leader. But then, someone wearing a mask appeared and claimed to be her leader. However, she doubts the masked person's behavior, who turns out to be Bo Guang. Then he forced her to drink wine and eat with him. Even though Yi Lin refused, he still forced her. Soon after, Bo Guang told about himself, who once loved a woman so deeply that he was even willing to steal jewelry and other valuables to give to her. One day, he was heartbroken by the woman because she married another richer man. Unable to accept being treated like that, he killed her right on her wedding day. Since then, he has become evil and often kidnaps the women he likes. On the other hand, PG seems to have been kidnapped by a group of people who wanted to lure an old bandit named Feng out of hiding. Feng came out and beat all his enemies, but then they threatened to kill his grandson, PG. However, he felt he had no grandchildren, so he killed them. Soon after, PG ran after Feng and asked him to become his master. At first, he refuses, but PG admits that Chong Hai tried to kidnap him. Out of curiosity about Chang Hai's purpose in pursuing PG, he finally accepts PG as his student. On the other hand, Chu Yang had arrived at the Heng San sect, but his clothes were wet and smelled fishy from being splashed with fish water. This made him forbidden from entering by the waiter when he wanted to drink at the wine shop. Ling, who saw this incident, paid the waiter to let people he didn't know get into the wine shop. Ling, who also went there, meets Yi Lin again, who is again bothered by Bo Guang. This time he tried to advise Bo Guang, saying that approaching a nun could bring bad luck, but Bo Guang refused his advice. Finally, Ling challenged Bo Guang to fight in a sitting position over Yi Lin. Soon after, they fight, although he has to admit Bo Guang's superiority again, who managed to beat him many times. Even though the fight looked fierce, Ling, who was fighting while keeping a chair pressed against his buttocks, finally lost after bouncing and falling to the ground floor of the tavern. Bo Guang, who felt that he had won, then got up from his chair, but apparently, Ling was still pinning his chair, so Bo Guang couldn't help but admit defeat. When Yi Lin was about to take Ling for treatment, he met two Ching Chen sect students who had previously clashed with him. Ling, who was already injured, could not fight back and was beaten hard by the Ching Chen sect student until finally, he was forced to stab the student so that the student died instantly. Ling, who was seriously injured and was about to escape with Yi Lin, received help from Chu Yang who threw a rock that paralyzed Ching Chen's student who was about to chase him. During their escape, Yi Lin could no longer carry Ling, who was already unconscious, so she fainted from exhaustion. Ling turns out to be saved by Chu Yang, who wants to face his leader, Dong Fang. Soon after, Chu Yang said he wanted to meet Dong Fang, so he doesn't misunderstand Chu Yang and Liu's relationship, who were only friends. Then he tells Dong Fang about his past when he first met Liu ten years ago. At that time, the previous leader, Wo Xing, sent Chu Yang to spy on the Heng San sect. Then he entered a room full of traps and rang a bell. Because he panicked, he hid quickly and dropped his flute. And it turned out that the first person to check the room was Liu, who found Chu Yang's flute. Not long after, Liu's brothers entered, but Liu said there was nothing there, so they left. Afterward, Chu Yang thanked Liu for not arresting him, and Liu said that he also liked music. 
Since then, Liu and Chuyang, who come from two rival sects, decide to make friends because they both like music. They seemed engrossed in playing music together, regardless of their respective sects. However, Chuyang's story doesn't make Dong Fong change his mind. He was afraid Chuyang, who had stepped down with Liu, would leak the Sun Moon sect's secrets. Chuyang said he was not a traitor and vowed to erase all martial arts to prove his loyalty. Suspicious of someone he brought, Dong Fong opens the shutter and finds Ling. Then Dong Fong channeled his energy to Ling, and he ordered Chuang to replace him, channeling energy to Ling. On the other hand, the Qing Chen sect student was limping while carrying the corpse of his friend who was killed by Ling. Not long after, one of the leaders of the Hang San sect, Ding Yi, healed the student, then asked where Yi Lin was. The student said she was with Ling, who had killed his college brother. Shortly after, Ding Yi met Lao, Lu Daiyo, and Ling Shan in a restaurant. Ding Yi then asked the whereabouts of Ling, who had kidnapped Yi Lin, but the students of the Huashan sect did not believe this, so a fight broke out between them. Not long after, one of Liu's students intervened and invited them to a banquet at Liu Elder's house. When he got there, Ding Yi met Yue, the leader of the Huashan sect, and told him that his student, Ling, had kidnapped Yi Lin and was working with a criminal named Bo Guang. Yue obviously didn't believe Ding Yi's words, but then the Qing Chen sect student came and said that Ling had also killed his brother. Not long after, Yi Lin appeared and complained to Ding Yi that Ling had also been killed by a Qing Chen sect student. Their contradictory statements made the elders ask for an explanation from Yi Lin as the victim of this incident. At the same time, Ling regained consciousness after being channeled by Chu Yang's energy. Chu Yang then shared his dilemma of wanting to attend the resignation of his best friend Liu, but he was still worried about Ling's condition. Hearing this, Ling convinced him to attend the event. Then he said he wanted to channel half of his energy to Ling before leaving so he could leave Ling in peace. On the other hand, Piji, disguised as a servant, was found out by Chonghai for eavesdropping on the conversations of the heads of the Five Sect Alliance, but he was rescued by Feng and then fled. At night, Chonghai, who knew where Piji and Feng were, came to confront them. He intended to kidnap Piji but was blocked by Feng until Yue came to defend Piji, then Chonghai left. After that, Piji knelt in front of Yue to thank him and asked Yue to take him as a student. He then accepts Piji's request because he wants Piji Qian Fa's book. After that, Yue invites Piji to meet a student of the Huashan sect, and Piji finds out that the girl who saved him first, Ling Shan, is the daughter of the leader of the Huashan sect. On the other hand, Dong Fang takes Ling and Yi Lin to an old temple. He ordered Yi Lin to nurse Ling so he could be healthy. Meanwhile, Chang Hai was furious that Yue had taken Piji. He ordered the student Ling had beaten up, namely Ren, to bring Piji's parents to Qing Chen sect for interrogation. The next day, Yue convinced Piji to work together to save his parents, who had been taken hostage by the Qing Chen sect. Yue promises to help him after Liu's resignation ceremony is over. At Liu's resignation ceremony, all the leaders of the Five Sect Alliance attended the event, including Yue and Chang'ai. Liu also said he would no longer meddle with the Five Sect Alliance matters. But suddenly, a student from Sung Shan sect named Fei Bin appeared and delivered a message from his leader, Zuo. Fei Bin says that Liu cannot resign before he kills his best friend, Chu Yang, who is from the Sun Moon sect. Liu then said his friendship with Chu Yang was only limited to playing music, and he swore he was not a traitor. Despite that, the leaders of the Five Sect Alliance chose to side with Zuo's envoy student because, after all, Liu's friend was from an enemy sect. Soon after, one of Liu's students defended his teacher, but the student was killed by Fei Bin. Seeing that, Liu was angry and attacked him, but another Sung Shan sect student appeared and took his wife and daughter hostage. In fact, they also killed his wife as proof of the cruelty of Sung Shan sect as the leader of the Five Sect Alliance, who did not discriminate against anyone related to the Sun Moon sect. Seeing that, Liu could only cry and couldn't do anything anymore, including the other leaders of the Five Sect Alliance. Then he decided to die, but Chu Yang came and convinced him not to do that. After that, Chu Yang looked down on everyone there, saying that the Five Sect Alliance, which was known as a righteous sect that always stood up for the truth, had actually committed deeds lower than animals. However, his words made Fei Ben angry, and he attacked him. Still, because half of his energy had been channeled to Ling, Chu Yang lost when he collided with inner strength. Fortunately, in the end, Chu Yang managed to outwit Fei Ben and ran away with his best friend, Liu. After the incident, Chang Hai and his students rushed back to the Qing Chen sect, but Yue, who was also with his students, including Piji, came after Chang Hai and asked him to let Piji's parents go. Because of that, they fought each other. But after attacking each other using their own moves, Yue defeated Chang Hai. Not long after, a man appeared and reported that Piji's parents had been kidnapped by Feng. Hearing this, Yue rushed to leave Chang Hai to look for Feng. On the other hand, Ling and Yi Lin, still in the old temple, suddenly heard music playing and looked for the source of the sound. It turned out that Chu Yang and Liu were playing music and talking about their friendship. Suddenly, Fei Bin caught up with them and intended to kill them. Knowing this, Ling and Yi Lin rush out and defend Chu Yang and Liu, but Fei Bin manages to overpower them all. 
Not long after, Muo Da, the leader of the Hangshan sect, came. Then Fei Bin told Mu Da his intention to kill Liu and Chuang. Upon hearing that, he allows Fei Bin to do this, but he suddenly kills Fei Bin and leaves. After that, Liu and Xu Yang handed a music book to Ling and hoped he could pass on the tunes and songs of the two in the book to the next generation. Then they breathed their last and died peacefully. Shortly after, Ling buried the two leaders he respected very much. When he was about to leave, Yi Lin accidentally dropped her talisman near Liu and Xu Yang's graves. Not long after, Dong Fang came to the grave and found Yi Lin's amulet, making him remember his past memories. At that time, a war was happening in the town where he used to live. Dong Fong and his young sister were left behind by their parents, who fled. Then he put her young sister into a barrel to hide then. After that, he gave her young sister an amulet and promised to save her. Shortly after, he is chased by a group of men who attack his city but is saved by a man with great fighting skills. The man was reluctant to tell Dong Fong his name, but the man said that Dong Fong had talent in martial arts. Unfortunately, he was a woman. Because of that, she is determined to become a warrior by disguising himself as a man, so she won't be bullied anymore and can protect her younger sister. Then she returned to the city that had been destroyed by the war. However, she did not find her younger sister there. In the present, it turns out that Ling and Yi Lin find that Feng is in the middle of torturing Piji's parents. Feng apparently also wants the book of Piji Qi and Fa. Then Ling saves Piji's parents and makes Feng run away in fear. There, it seems that Piji's mother had died due to Feng's torment. Soon after, Zhenan left a message for Ling to convey to Piji. After that, he died. Not long after, Yue and the students of Huashan Sek came after hearing Ling's voice, and Piji could only weep for his parents, who had died. The scene shifts to the Huashan Sek temple. Piji is officially made a student of Huashan Sek, while Ling is punished for his actions that killed Qing Chen Sek students and befriended the villain Bo Guang. Yue then takes Piji to practice. It turned out that he had learned PZ Chen Fa swordsmanship before Yue continued teaching him Hua Shan Sek swordsmanship. On the other hand, Ling, who was being punished, read the inscription of the name of one of Hua Shan Sek's ancestors. Then he meditated without realizing he was being watched by someone living there. Three months later, Ling is still being punished, and PZ's skills in swordsmanship continue to improve. Although he still loses to his seniors in the temple of Hua Shan Sek, even Ling Shan can easily defeat PZ using the sword moves she learned from her mother. Piji feels that his current skill will not be able to be used to avenge his parents. Therefore, Piji practiced harder and harder until night. Lingshan then helps him by teaching him to practice, but Piji, impatient, becomes angry at her and accuses her of just playing with him. That night, Lingshan meets Piji again, but he accidentally injures his leg, which makes Piji treat him and then carry him to his room. After that, he apologizes for the way he treated Lingshan before. Since then, Lingshan has started to pay attention to Piji, who is diligent and ambitious, in contrast to Ling, who seems relaxed and not serious. The next day, Yue assigns Piji to the city, looking for the leader of the Five Sect Alliance's birthday present. However, Lingshan secretly follows Piji but gets caught by him. After that, he invites her to eat and gives her a present in the form of a hair accessory. When winter has come, Piji returns to approach Lingshan and gives her roasted sweet potatoes, but when she opens them, she finds that the roasted potatoes have turned to charcoal. Soon after, Piji and Lingshan were attacked by Lu Daio, who was practicing, because apparently, he had replaced the roasted sweet potatoes with charcoal. Lu Daio does this because he is annoyed at the closeness between them, and at the same time, he reminds Lingshan of her relationship with Ling so that she realizes that she has betrayed Ling. After that, Lingshan meets Ling in the cave and stays the night because it's snowing outside. While sleeping, she kept delirious and mentioned Piji's name, but Ling, who was naturally indifferent, didn't really suspect this. The next morning, Piji comes to the cave where Ling is to pick up Lingshan. At first, he doesn't have feelings for her. He approaches Lingshan to learn sword techniques better, but feelings of love for her grow in his heart over time. Meanwhile, Lingshan starts to be in a dilemma and feels guilty about Ling, but at the same time, Piji also keeps forcing her to confess her feelings for him. The scene changed, showing Yue and his wife attending Zuo's birthday banquet. There, Zuo proposed to merge the Five Sect Alliance into one sect, but this proposal was rejected by the other leaders, and even Muo Da, the leader of the South Hangshan sect, did not attend the birthday event. On the other hand, Piji, who is always rejected by Lingshan, ignores her existence in return, so she tries to attract his attention again, and a love triangle occurs between them. Ling, who is worried about the change in Lingshan's attitude, returns to the college and finds her hugging her lover, Piji. After that, Ling returned to the cave feeling hurt, then took out his sword and attacked the cave wall blindly. He accidentally knocked down the wall and found a room with carvings about sword moves to counter the moves of each alliance in the Five Sect Alliance. Soon after, Ling continued to read the carvings, thus knowing the dark history of the Five Sect Alliance, which turned out to trick the previous leader of the Sun Moon Sect into falling into the Five Sect Alliance's trap. 
On the other hand, Dong Fong looked lost in thought as she continued to pay attention to the talisman she found. Not long after, a soldier came to report his investigation and said that Yi Lin from the North Heng San sect was the owner of the talisman. Then Dong Fong rushed to meet Yi Lin, giving her a talisman and untied her hair while saying she was Yi Lin's older sister. After that, she felt that Yi Lin seemed to be harboring something. Soon after, another nun told her that Yi Lin had been daydreaming a lot since meeting Ling. Hearing this, Dong Fong went and caught Bo Guang and poisoned him. She ordered him to find Ling and then bring her to meet Yi Lin within one month. Otherwise, Bo Guang would die of poisoning. The scene changed to show Yue, his wife, and their students going up the mountain to meet Ling. Then he tested how far Ling's swordsmanship had progressed during his exile on the mountain. Shortly after, he confronts Zongze, but he fights half-heartedly due to remembering the carvings on the cave walls. Yue then stopped Ling and reprimanded him for using unorthodox moves that didn't focus on inner strength. Yue finally told the history of the Huasan sect, which was divided into two factions, namely the Qi faction and the Blade faction, which were at war with each other and led to the defeat of the Blade faction, which fled from the Huasan sect. Yue was a survivor of the Qi faction in the Huasan sect and emphasized that inner strength was essential to becoming a strong warrior. Then he warned Ling and his other students to focus on training their inner strength. After that, Ling decided to listen to his master's orders, forget about the counter moves engraved on the cave walls, and focus on cultivating his inner strength. Sometime later, Bo Guang managed to find Ling's place of exile. Then he came to bring wine for Ling, and they talked. After that, Bo Guang said the purpose of his visit was to invite Ling to meet Yi Lin. However, Ling refuses his invitation, finally making Bo Guang challenge him to fight, and if Ling loses, he must join Bo Guang. Shortly after, Ling's fight against Bo Guang for the third time took place, and Ling was again defeated by Bo Guang, who had just issued eight moves. Even so, Ling refuses to go with Bo Guang because he feels the bet only benefits Bo Guang. Then he entered the cave to learn moves from the other sex. Soon after, he came back out and was again defeated by Bo Guang. When Ling was about to return to the cave, he was prevented by Bo Guang, who suspected that someone else in the cave was teaching him. Afraid that the Five Sect Alliance's dark secret would be discovered by Bo Guang, Ling lied that there was a powerful person in the cave who had taught him. Hearing this, Bo Guang shouted from the mouth of the cave to curse the person Ling meant, but suddenly an old man appeared. Ling was surprised when his lie turned out to be true, even though he did not recognize the old man. Bo Guang then guessed that the old man was Feng Qing, one of the strongest warriors in the history of the Huashan sect. Feng Qing then teaches Ling how to counter Bo Guang's technique simply by reversing the order of his own moves. Soon after, Ling managed to withstand more than 30 moves of Bo Guang, although, in the end, he still managed to defeat Ling. After that, Feng Qing taught Ling how to punch an opponent, so he made Bo Guang petrified in front of the cave. Then Feng Qing explained about the swordsmanship engraved in the cave. He said that the essence of swordsmanship was a formless move that could counterattack any sword move. He explained the nine basic swordsmanship philosophies, and Ling understood the philosophies. Knowing the potential possessed by Ling, Feng Qing continued to teach the Duchi Chiyu Bai technique to predict the enemy's movements and counterattacks so that moves could be faster than the opponent's moves. After understanding Feng Qing's theory, Ling uses this to attack Bo Guang's move until finally, he defeats Bo Guang for the first time. Then he told Bo Guang that he won not because he could be faster but because he already understood the basic philosophy of the Duchi Chiyu Bai technique. Afterward, Bo Guang left Ling because he had already lost. Suddenly, Ling knelt in front of Feng Qing and asked him to teach him another technique. On the other hand, Bo Guang went to meet Dong Fang, who was waiting for him in the forest. He tells about his defeat against Ling so that Dong Fang will meet Ling. Shortly after, Feng Qing confronts Dong Fang, thus getting them involved in a fierce battle which results in a draw. He finally allows Dong Fang to meet Ling, who says he doesn't have romantic feelings for Yi Lin. Moreover, Ling is punished, but Dong Fang still doesn't give up. She even stays with him to convince him to go see Yi Lin. Moments later, Ling finds out that Dong Fong isn't a boy after an accident. Since then, Dong Fong finally didn't look like a man anymore, but she still hid her identity as the leader of the Sun Moon sect by using a pseudonym. After some time had passed, Feng Qing taught all the Diki Chiu Bai's moves to Ling and ordered him to keep his name secret from anyone because he did not want to touch the world of martial arts anymore. After that, he left Ling. On the other hand, Yue was visited by two men who were old friends from the Blade faction, Bu Ping and Bu Yao, who apparently wanted to take back the Huasan sect. That also made Yue fight against Bu Yao and managed to corner him. But, suddenly, Ding Mian from the Sung Shan sect came, then told Yue to resign as leader of the Huashan sect while mentioning his cunning when fighting against the Blade faction. On the other hand, Lu Dayo informs Ling about what's going on at the college, so he rushes over there accompanied by Dong Fang. Ling then fights against Bu Ao, but because he has not yet mastered the Du Qi Chiu Bai technique, he is seriously injured when he is attacked by Bu Yao. However, Dong Fang did not remain silent. She attacked him and instantly killed him with one strike. After that, she took Ling away. 
Dong Fang then treats Ling with energy channeling. At first, she doesn't want to exchange energy, but Ling's life is in danger, so she does it. After he recovered a bit, Ling asked her to take him back to see his master. Arriving at the Huasan Sect Temple, Yue asks Dong Fang to stay there for a while, while Ling is reluctant to tell Yue who taught him the Du Chi Chi Bai technique. He couldn't tell about Dong Fang to Yue because he didn't know her. On the other hand, Zhang Ze looked suspicious of Dong Fang when he saw her way of flying, similar to the Sun Moon Sect. Then Zhang Ze finally trapped her and managed to corner her on a burning bridge, but she survived and promised revenge on the Huasan Sect. After that, Yue left the Huasan Sect to ask for help from the Sung San Sect. Yue also took all her students except Ling, who was sick, and Lu Daio, who took care of Ling. Not long after, Ling Shan came to see Ling and gave him a martial arts book she stole from her father. She hopes that Ling will get well soon so he can study the book. Soon after, Ling beats Lu Daio for forcing him to read the book Ling Shan gave him because he is reluctant to learn the knowledge from the book. After that, he went to get some fresh air because he was bored, and Lu Daio was still unable to move because of his acupressure. When he was walking around, suddenly, a giant barrel rolled towards Ling, and when it was broken, it seemed that there was Bo Guang in the barrel. He then helped Bo Guang. Then they walked by supporting each other because Ling was still sick while Bo Guang was still poisoned. On the way, they even met Ding Mian, who beat them both up. On the other hand, Yue was furious after knowing that Ling Shan stole his book and gave it to Ling. Then he returned to the Huasan Sect Temple to retrieve the book. While Ling and Bo Guang are cornered by Ding Mian because they haven't recovered yet, Dong Fang comes and instantly kills Ding Mian. Afterward, she is angry at Ling because of his master's treatment. Dong Fang meets Yue and Ling Shan, who are about to return to the Huashan Sect Temple. Then they fight, and Dong Fang loses because her energy hasn't recovered from helping Ling the other day. When Yue was about to kill Dong Fang, he was held back by Ling, letting Dong Fang be carried by Bo Guang to escape. Then Ling escorts Yue and Ling Shan back to the temple and finds Lu Daio dead in a state of being tapped by him. Moreover, the book Ling Shan gave him has been lost, and Ling insists on defending himself in front of his master. However, Yue didn't seem to believe Ling's explanation but still took him to the Sung Shan Sect's temple. At night, it rained heavily, and the Huashan Sect entourage was approached by an army of masked warriors who forced Yue to hand over the PZ Qian Fa book, so a battle ensued between the Huashan Sect and the masked warriors. Ling, who was still recovering, could not fight the soldiers, and then he fainted. When he awakens, Ling finds that his fellow academies are dead. Meanwhile, Yue, Zhangze, Lao, Lingshan, and Piji are still fighting against the masked warriors in the middle of the forest. Unfortunately, they got punched, so they couldn't move until finally, Booping and Liu Fai from the Sung Shan sect came pretending they didn't know the masked soldiers who were actually soldiers hired by the Sung Shan sect. Suddenly, Ling came to save Yue and the others, so he fought against Booping. Everyone seemed amazed by his strange and fast sword skills until finally, he won, and his sword skills were recognized by Booping, who is a blade faction. Booping knew that Ling hadn't even used the Huashan sex combat techniques yet. He even mentioned that Ling's sword skills surpassed Yue's sword skills the leader of Huashan sect himself. Soon after, Booping thanked Liu Fai for helping him take back Huashan sect, but he discouraged himself because he was amazed by Ling's sword skills and left. Afterward, Liu Fai left because he knew he could not match Ling. Shortly after, the masked warriors ganged up on Ling, but he could beat them all and blind their eyes, but the wounds in his body recurred. Then Ling tries to open his blood to Yue before he finally faints. On the other hand, the soldiers reported to Zuo that Ling had blinded them all. This also made him suspect that Ling must have learned the PZ Qi and Fa skill he had been looking for. Not long after, Yue and the others arrived at Luoyang City. They decided to stop by PZ's grandfather's house. There Ling felt that his master was starting to ignore him because his master was suspicious of him using the PZ Qi and Fa skill that had been targeted by warriors all this time, even though his move was actually Feng Qing's Du Qi Qi Bai move. This also made Piji's grandfather and uncle suspicious of Ling, especially since he was the last person to meet Piji's father before being declared dead. Not long after, Piji's uncle, Bofin, attacked Ling and managed to snatch a book from him, so he was brought by Bofin to be prisoned in front of Yue. Then Piji's grandfather and Yuenba accused Ling of stealing the book Piji Qian Fa based on the book that was taken from him. However, he insists that it is just a music book. Fortunately, Zhang Ze defended him and asked a music expert to translate the book. Shortly after, Wang's family accountant, Yi Xie, who knew a little about music, tried to translate the book, but Yi Xie failed to understand due to lack of knowledge and suggested they go to a basket craftsman named Lu Zuang. Then they met Lu Zuang, who finally admitted that the book was indeed a music book, not a martial arts book in disguise. After that, Lu Zuang tried to play music from the book's notes but failed to complete it and then took the book to his aunt, who finally translated all of the book's contents through music. Yuenba then apologized to Ling for accusing him. After that, Yuenba and everyone else left, leaving him to thank Lu Zuang and his aunt. 
After that, Lu Zueng took Ling inside to meet his aunt, Ying, and then gave her the music book. Soon after, Ling said that the book was written by the late Liu and Chuyang, but he relapsed, so Lu Zueng channeled energy into him. Shortly after, Ying plays music, so Ling can calm down. Since then, he has continued to visit Lu Zueng's house to learn to play the harp. Not long after, he said goodbye to Ying, who told him to always take care of himself. Then when Ling was about to leave, Lu Zueng came to give him a harp gift from his aunt. The scene then changed, showing Yue and his wife about to buy something in the city, but a mysterious woman appeared who attacked him and was about to take his sword. Then he fought with the woman and was poisoned, thus making his move paralyze the woman. Finally, the woman gave him an antidote. She explained that she would have plastic surgery by the killer healer. It turned out that Zhang Zhe knows about the reputation of murderous healers who always ask their patients to kill one life to save another. But the woman said her treatment was not enough if only one life, so the killer healer ordered her to take five classic swords and collect four. On this occasion, she managed to steal the leader of the Huashan sex sword and run away to where the killer healer. Soon after, Yue and Zhang Zhe sneaked into the assassin's place and witnessed how great the assassin was treating the woman who stole his sword. Not long after, the healer assassin came out to see them, but his behavior irritated them, and then they chose to leave. Not long after, the healer assassin actually came to the Huashan sect people and then looked for Ling. He checked the condition of Ling's body and found out that there was a lot of accumulated energy in his body. The assassin healer then gave Ling a potion that could prolong his life, but he refused it from the healer, who didn't know him, so the potion was given to Feng Huang, the sword-stealing woman whose face had changed. After that, Feng Huang returned the sword she stole to Yue, but he refused. Then she stays at the Huashan sect to take care of Ling, just as the healer assassin had ordered before leaving. Not long after, Ling received a gift of wine from someone named Samada, whom he didn't know. Then he drank the wine accompanied by Feng Huang and a man named Zhu Qian, who praised the aroma of his wine. Zhu Qian then taught Ling how to drink wine and took out his collection vessel to drink the wine. Shortly after, someone named Lao came looking for Zhu Qian, who had fled, then accused Ling of taking medicine. At night, Lao kidnaps Ling and puts him in a sack. Afterward, Lao taps him on a chair and intends to take his blood. Lao continued to say that he and Zhu Qian were best friends, but Zhu Qian instead stole his medicine for his daughter. Lao said that Ling had drunk the medicine through Zhu Qian's wine container before, and for that, he would take Ling's blood which already contained the medicine for his daughter. On the other hand, Lao's daughter tried to stop her father until finally, Zhu Qian came and whispered something to him. Hence, he removed the acupressure on Ling's body and knelt down to apologize to Ling. However, Ling felt suspicious because everyone he didn't know was being very nice to him. Then he asked Lao and Zhu Qian for an explanation, but they refused to answer. After that, he shot them, then entered Lao's daughter's room carrying a knife. Not long after, a man named Wu Zhe came and released Lao and Zhu Qian's bloodshot. Afterward, they entered Lao's daughter's room and found Ling, who had fainted because of giving his blood containing the drug to Lao's daughter. This also made Lao very grateful for the kindness of the warrior from the Huashan sect. The next day, Ling was invited by Lao to the Hill of the Five Rulers. Then Lao, Samada, Zhu Qian, and Wu Zhe turned out to be the leaders of a small sect in the city. Afterward, Ling drank the wine served and talked to Lao and the others until they were very drunk. Not long after that, Ying appeared in front of Lao, Samada, Zhu Qiang, and Wu Zhe, and they knelt respectfully. The warriors from the small sect apparently were followers of the Sun Moon sect and greatly respected her, who was Wu Xing's daughter and the former leader of the Sun Moon sect. The next day, Ling woke up and found Ying playing the lute. He was happy to see her, then he took her for a walk. So, Ling had always thought that Ying was a grandmother because Lu Zueng called her aunt, but he was still in awe of her musical talent. Meanwhile, Ying thinks Ling is a brave man, which has made her fall in love. Not long after, Ling's illness recurred, causing Ying to panic. Soon after, Dong Fang appears, then asks Ying to leave and let her take care of Ling. Then Ying obeys the orders of the leader of Sun Moon sect and hands over her mosquito net hat to Dong Fang to disguise herself. Sometime later, Ling regained consciousness and continued his journey with Dong Fang, who disguised herself as Ying. On the way, they meet a Shaolin monk who examines Ling's body, then the monk gives him medicine. Afterward, Ling took the drug and forced Ying to take the drug too, but she refuses, so he threatens to hurt himself by jumping into the abyss. When they were about to help Ling, an incident caused them to fall into a ravine, causing the mosquito net hat covering Ying's face to fall off, and Ling finally found out that the woman he had thought was Ying was actually Dong Fang. Shortly after, Ling and Dong Fang find a hotel to rest in, but when he wakes up, he doesn't see her. The hotel maid came and said to Ling that Dong Fang was hunting wolves. Hearing this, he followed her into the forest, then saved her, who was cornered and injured by the wolves. Ling knows that Dong Fang is secretly looking for wolf bile, so she can cure his illness. She does this solely for her sister, Yi Lin, who likes Ling and is reluctant to admit her romantic feelings for him. But Ling said he had no more feelings for Yi Lin and only considered her his young sister. 
At the same time, he expresses his feelings for Dong Fong because she always takes care of him. When Ling was about to leave, Dong Fong hugged him and finally confessed her feelings. On the other hand, Yue and Zhang Zhe, looking for Ling's whereabouts, finally met him, who was with Dong Fong. Yue was angry at Ling for having contact with Dong Fong from an evil sect. Then, when he was about to kill Dong Fong, whose energy had not recovered, Ling held his sword with both hands until the sword was covered in his blood. Zhang Zhe, who had always loved Ling, begged Yue not to kill him and Dong Fong. Yue finally decided to expel him from Huashan sect by breaking his sword. After that, they left Ling and Dong Fong. Not long after, Ling fainted again because his wound recurred. Dong Fong finally decides to find the Shaolin monk who gave medicine to her because the monk said his master could heal Ling's wounds. After a while, Dong Fong finally arrives at the Shaolin temple and meets the chief monk named Fong Jing. However, he thinks that Dong Fong is Ying. Then he advised her to study religion in the hope that she could return to the right path. When Ling wakes up, Fong Zhen goes to him and says he will teach Ling about muscle transformation, but he refuses and asks where Dong Fong is. Then Fong Zheng lied and said that Dong Fong was not there, so Ling left the Shaolin Temple. While on the way, Ling saw a girl being attacked by several students from the Five Sect Alliance. After that, he helped her, who was none other than Ying. Fortunately, he managed to kill several Five Sect Alliance students and lead her out of there. At night, Ling asked Ying to tell a story to cheer her up. Then she told a story similar to what they had experienced. She said that the story's main character could not recognize the person who had saved him and considered someone else his savior. As the night wore on, Ying asked Ling to rest because she would take him to meet the four brothers. The next day, Ling and Ying came to the four brothers' house disguised as students from the Sung Shan sect and Hua Shan sect. After that, she offered them to fight against Ling, and the winner would receive the prize. Hearing that, they agreed and started fighting against Ling. Fortunately, he could defeat the three of them easily. Then they finally persuaded their eldest brother, Zhang, to fight against Ling. In the end, he still managed to win against Zhang. Afterward, Hei Bai and Zhang seemed to whisper and then offered Ling to fight someone in the dungeon. Hearing this, Ying took Ling away for a while. She gives him an object and asks him to give the object to the person he will fight in the dungeon. However, Ling initially hesitated, but Ying convinced him and said she would tell him everything after he finished the fight. So, Ling was ordered to wear a mask like Zhang and his three brothers and then entered the dungeon to meet someone he was going to fight, who was none other than Wo Xing, Ying's father, who was imprisoned under Dong Fong's orders. But Ling didn't know that the old man who was chained was the former leader of the Sun Moon sect, who was cooped by Dong Fong, and Wo Xing himself finally wanted to fight Ling after being heated by Zhang and his three brothers. Soon after, Ling entered Wo Xing's detention cell and gave him the object Ying had entrusted. After that, Wo Xing and Ling fought, and Wo Xing fought hand and foot, bound in chains. Even so, he could deal with Ling easily. He even released an energy explosion that knocked Zhang and his three brothers unconscious. When Zhang woke up, he panicked and woke his three brothers to check on Wo Xing's detention cell, but Wo Xing apparently was still there. Afterward, the four brothers lock the door of Wo Xing's cell, then go upstairs and get the prize promised by Ying and a letter from Ling admitting defeat to Wo Xing. On the other hand, apparently, Ying managed to release her father. Suddenly, Ling, who lost to Wo Xing, fainted and was left in the dungeon to replace Wo Xing, who had escaped. Actually, Ying wanted to take her father back there to free Ling, but Wo Xing refused and suggested running away first and saving him later. Ling, who had just woken up, found himself bound in chains and imprisoned. He screamed loudly though in vain. He felt uncomfortable with the prison bed because many insects were biting his body. Soon after, he opened the bed and found a strangely carved jutsu. Not long after, Hai Bai returned to the dungeon and asked Ling about the deal with Wo Xing. Suddenly, Ling asked him about his deal. Hai Bai said he would let Wo Xing go if Wo Xing wanted to teach him martial arts. Upon hearing that, Ling told Hai Bai to leave. Shortly after, Ling read the carvings about martial arts, which turned out to be Sisangapa's moves or deep energy-sucking moves. Ling himself didn't know what kind of moves they were and how powerful these moves were. Sometime later, Hai Bai returned and asked for a deal. Then he taught Hai Bai Sisangapa's technique randomly, but when he tried to attack Hai Bai, Hai Bai's energy was sucked in, and Ling became confused. However, Ling took advantage of the opportunity and escaped from the dungeon. He felt the energy increase in his body, and even his wounds had healed. Not long after, Ling met Ying and Wo Xing again, who wanted to save him. Then Wo Xing returned to his imprisonment and killed Hai Bei because of his actions while Wo Xing was detained. Seeing his brother die, Zhang and his other brothers decided to die. The scene shows Wo Xing, Ling, and Ying by the river. Wo Xing said he wanted to match them, then asked Ling to join the Sun Moon sect. But he refused the offer, even though Wo Xing threatened not to tell him how to withstand the side effects of the Sisangapa's jutsu, which would later injure his body. Ying then admits that she is the heart-picking woman but Wo Xing, already enraged by Ling's rejection, takes her away before Ling can reply to her statement. Sometime later, Ling continued his journey and met an arrogant general. 
Then he killed the general and stole his armor, disguising himself as a general named Wang. After that, he saved one of the leaders of the North Hangshan sect, Ding Xin, from the attack of the black-robed warriors. Shortly after, Ding Xin's students are kidnapped one by one, so Ling helps him and meets Yilin again. Afterward, Ding Xin was met by Liu Fei and persuaded to agree to Zuo's proposal to merge the Five Sect Alliance into one. But Ding Xin, who refused the proposal, was attacked by the black-robed warrior until his arm was severed and he died. Not long after, Ling and Ding Xin's students discover the state of their master, who was about to die. Then he asked Ling to escort his student back to the North Hangshan Sect Temple, and Ling kept his promise. Soon after, Ling intends to meet his master, Yue, begging to be accepted again at the Huashan Sect. Afterward, he finds that Ling Shan and Piji are reading the document records at his old house, then finds the riddle that his late father said. The puzzle shows where the Pizi Qian Fa book is hidden, which turns out to be on the house's roof. Suddenly, two Sung Shan sect students immobilize Ling Shan and Piji and seize the book of Pizi Qian Fa. Seeing that, Ling chased after the two intruders and managed to retrieve the book despite being injured and eventually fainting. Suddenly, Yue and Zhang Zhe came, and Yue secretly hid the book of Pizi Qian Fa while Zhang Zhe was trying to revive them. The next day, Liu Fei came and accused Ling of killing a student from the Sung Shan sect, but he denied it and accused the student of the Sung Shan sect of trying to steal the Book of Pizi Qian Fa. Suddenly, the nuns from the North Hang San sect also came and defended Ling. Soon after, they fight using Sisangapa's technique. Seeing this, Liu Fei again accused Ling of joining a sect and fled. Yi Lin then invites Ling to help them save one of their teachers, but Lao refuses her intentions and fights against them. Suddenly, Yue's book falls from Lao's body. Because of that, he runs. There it is revealed that Lao is Zuo's spy and the person who stole the book and killed Lu Dio while taking care of Ling. On the other hand, Piji suspects that Yue has taken the book Pizi Qian Fa because, at that time, he fainted with Ling Shan and Ling. Not long after, Piji almost died after being stabbed by someone in black robes who was none other than his master, Yue. Piji, who woke up after being treated, was examined by Yue. Still, he knew that Yue was the one who tried to kill him because he recognized Yue's shoes very well, but he admitted that Ling had attacked him so that Yue wouldn't kill him. On the other hand, Ling Shan finds Lao's sword beside the guard, whose face has been disfigured, and thinks that the corpse is Lao's, so Ling Shan is sure that Ling did try to kill Piji. Then she meets Ling and conveys her disappointment to him, but he denies this and returns his disappointment because Ling Shan has betrayed him. On the other hand, Piji, who already knows Yue's intentions, is forced to play dumb in front of Yue. Turned out that he wants to kill Yue back, but he can't do anything and is forced to always be near Ling Shan, so Yue can't kill him. The next day, Ling and the nuns from the North Heng Shan sect managed to save Ding Yi. After that, Ling removed the mask of one of the soldiers, who turned out to be Liu Fei. Seeing this, Ding Yi was furious with the actions of the Sung Shan sect, who wanted to merge the five sects into one sect, to the point of kidnapping him for refusing their wishes. Then he told Liu Fei that North Heng Shan sect from today will leave the five sect alliance. The scene changed, and Ding Yi was seen talking to his senior students. He felt that Ling's character did not match the rumors and did not even believe Yue, who accused Ling of heresy after seeing him in person. On the other hand, Ling was confused about who the secret lady was, Dong Fong or Ying, so he decided to meet the sect leader of the Sun Moon sect followers and attend a meeting of those who wanted to attack the Shaolin Temple and help the secret lady. News of the secret lady being held captive by the Shaolin Temple reached Ying and Wo Xing's ears. Ying invited her father to the Shaolin Temple to take revenge because she knew the secret lady was Dong Fong. Upon arriving there, Wo Xing and Ying were confronted by monks who fought solidly together, which overwhelmed him, and retreated. The scene then switches, showing Ding Yi and Fang Zheng meeting Dong Fong. There, Fang Zheng tells Dong Fong that Ling refuses his offer, thus allowing her to leave the Shaolin Temple. Meanwhile, Zuo and the three remaining leaders of the Five Sect Alliance also arrive at the Shaolin Temple after hearing that the small evil sect led by Ling will attack the Shaolin Temple to release the secret lady. Fang Zheng then said that he had freed the secret lady and invited the Alliance leader to come inside. Zhou also received contempt from Ding Yi for his actions against Ding Yi just for the sake of fulfilling his wish. Fang Zheng then separated them and suggested they settle private matters outside the Shaolin Temple. Then Fang Zheng continued to say that the Shaolin Temple did not want to fight against a small evil sect and had ordered his students to evacuate and vacate the temple. At night at the Shaolin Temple, Yue visits Ding Yi to talk about the evil Zuo, but it turns out to be a trap, and he attacks Ding Yi instead. The next day, Ling and the small sects came to the Shaolin Temple but found no one there. He instead meets Ding Yi, who is dying. Then he passed the North Heng San sect to Ling because he really believed in Ling, then he died. Soon after, Ling and the others head into the forest, but instead, they are attacked by the Sung Shan sect until some of them collapse and return to the Shaolin Temple. While resting at the Shaolin Temple, it turned out that Feng Huang found a secret underground passage, then they went there to trace the path. 
Shortly after, Ling met with La Han Shaolin fighters and fought against them. Even though he had fought fiercely, he could beat them and make it out. After that, Ling took his comrades out of the Shaolin Temple, while he secretly returned to the Shaolin Temple to find the secret lady. Then he hid on the temple roof and saw Fang Zheng, who reprimanded Zhou for trapping and attacking a small sect. Not long after, Wu Xing and Ying came to the Shaolin Temple and asked Fang Zheng to hand over his captive. Fang Zheng said that he had released the secret lady. Hearing that, Wu Xing criticized Fang Zheng and said that the secret lady was his daughter, Ying, while the prisoner was Dong Fang, the person who had ousted him from the seat of the leadership of the Sun Moon sect. Everyone was surprised, including Ling, who realized that he had fallen in love with the Five Sect Alliance's number one enemy, namely the leader of the Sun Moon Sect, Dong Fang. The debate heated up, so Wu Xing and Fang Zheng fought fiercely, their fight looked even, and both were injured. Zuo then took advantage of this moment to attack Wu Xing. Apparently, he had learned how to hide his energy so that it would not be absorbed by Wu Xing's Sisangapa technique, so Wu Xing was even more injured. Soon after, Yue stepped forward to attack Wu Xing. Then Wu Xing called Ling down from his hiding place, causing a teacher versus student fight. However, Ling seemed to hold back his attack because he didn't want to hurt his master. Because of that, Ling was attacked until he was injured and fainted. When Ling woke up, apparently Ying had taken him into the cave where Wu Xing and Ying lived. There, Ling channeled his energy to help revive Wu Xing. Elsewhere, Dong Fang is seen fighting against Chang Hai and his students. Suddenly, Yue and Zhang Zhe attack her, and they defeat her. Yue then lies to Dong Fang that Ling is dead. Hearing that, she looked shocked and saddened by this news, and Chang Hai used this to stab her. An angry Dong Fang then went on a rampage and beat up all of Chang Hai's students while Chang Hai, Yue, and Zhang Zhe fled. Meanwhile, Ying tells Ling that she is the zither picking ant, while the people in the small sect are her servants who call her the secret lady. When Ling saw Chang Hai, who was about to attack Yue, he counterattacked Chang Hai. Afterward, Yue said Dong Fang went berserk after fighting against the Chang Hai students. Hearing that, Ling went to see Dong Fang. Arriving there, Ling saw Dong Fang amidst the corpses. She turned around when he called her and hugged him. Fortunately, she was still alive. Afterward, Dong Fang admits that she killed those people and injured Yue. She did all this for Ling's sake, but he refused to acknowledge her struggle, even threatening to kill her. Seeing Ling's attitude makes Dong Fang disappointed. After that, she thrust herself into the sword Ling drew towards her. Because of this, Ling feels guilty, then she pushes him away and tells him that if they meet, then she will only treat him as a stranger. The scene changed, showing Yue, who had returned to the Huashan sect and practiced the technique of Pizi Qian Fa, but Yue suddenly vomited blood because he could not master the art, so he told Zhang Zhe that he would go to Hua Mountain for three months to practice swords. On the other hand, Ling, who had lost his zest for life, was taken by Feng Huang to meet the nuns of the North Hangshan sect to fulfill his promise to the late Ding Yi to become the leader of the North Hangshan sect. Meanwhile, Piji grows worried that his teacher will kill him, so Piji decides to propose to Ling Shan. Three months later, Yue returned to the Huashan sect's temple, but Zhang Zhe felt a change in his voice which was more feminine. Piji then meets Yue and says he asked permission to marry Ling Shan, and he agrees. Elsewhere, Ling is informed by the nuns that they have sent out invitations for the appointment of Ling as the new leader of the North Hangshan sect. After that, Ling and Yi Lin, talking by the river, were met by Bo Guang, who now looked like a monk. Bo Guang said that he was forced by Dong Fang to look after Yi Lin for the rest of his life. On the other hand, Ying intends to go to the palace of the Sun Moon sect to smooth out Wu Xing's plan to take back the throne, but it seems that her intentions have been known by Dong Fang. Moreover, Dong Fang knows that Ying is the one who liberated Wu Xing. However, she had no intention of killing Ying. Instead, she ordered Ying and her father to leave the Sun Moon sect and not bother her. Dong Fang knew that Ying liked Ling. If Ying keep bother her, she threatened to kill Ling. Hearing this, Ying knelt down and begged her not to involve Ling. Then she told Ying to swallow poison medicine as collateral. Soon after, the day of Ling's appointment arrived, and his friends from the small sect of Sun Moon sect devotees came. It turned out that the monks from the Shaolin temple also attended. Ying is also present to congratulate him. After that, Ling talked with Fang Zheng about the history of the book Pizi Qian Fa, a passage from the Book of Sunflower written by an imperial magistrate, then given to the Shaolin Temple. After that, the two patriarchs of Huashan sneaked in and read the scroll, each of them reading and memorizing half of the scripture. After that, they wrote down their memories to each other but apparently didn't match when combined. The Shaolin Temple also knew about the actions of the two men and sent Monk Tu into Huashan sect, but when they got there, the three of them discussed and rewrote the book, and then the rewritten version of the book was stolen by Sun Moon sect. After that, Monk Tu Yin changed his name to Lin Lian Tu, known as the ancestor of Pizhi, so he created the Pizhi Qian Fa technique adopted from the Sunflower scripture, causing a battle between sects over the scripture. Monk Tu Yin was advised by his former master of Shaolin to hide the Pizhi Qian Fa book. 
he forbade all of his descendants to read the book so as not to know the secret of the power of the Pizzi Chi and Fa technique, where the power is obtained by castrating the genitals like Yue did. After that, Fang Zheng asked Ling to go to the Five Sect Alliance meeting held by Zuo because he was about to merge the other sects into one. Fang Zheng said that Zuo could not be the sole leader and that the Shaolin monks would also go there. Shortly after, Ling accompanied Fang Zheng to go home, but they were intercepted by the Sun Moon Sect troops who had come on Dong Fang's orders to capture Ling. Luckily, Ying arrives with a fake placard from the leader and manages to drive away, saving Ling. She also succeeded in persuading one of the leaders, Yun, to return to serve Wosheng. Ying said that she had been poisoned by Dong Fang and intended to attack her at her base with her father to reclaim the leader of Sun Moon Sect's throne. Ling then volunteered to help her by pretending to be a prisoner and was taken by Yun into the Sun Moon Sect headquarters. Soon after, Ling met Lian Ting, who looked similar to him and was invited to enter the leader's hall. Wu Xing, who was in disguise, attacked Dong Fang and managed to defeat her in one strike, but apparently, this person was not Dong Fang. Afterward, Lian Ting is threatened to confront them with Dong Fang. Then he took them to a pavilion in the middle of the lake, but apparently, it was just his trap. The heavier the weight of the pavilion, the faster it would sink, so Wu Xing was about to throw something under it. Seeing this, Ling stopped Wu Xing and instead threw himself into the lake, followed by Ying. They both got caught in a whirlpool but managed to survive. After that, Ying said that she couldn't live if the man in front of her died. Lian Ting then reports to Dong Fang that Ling came here, but suddenly, Lian Ting is killed by Wu Xing. After that, his corpse is sent to Dong Fang, thus seeing that, making her very angry. After that, Dong Fang managed to find Ling and Ying, who were holding hands, so she attacked Ying. Suddenly, a fight ensues, but Ling has to be beaten back by Dong Fang's technique. Even when their fight is quite even, Ling is defeated in the end. When Ling continued the fight to the cliff's edge, Wu Xing attacked Dong Fang, causing her to fall. Then Ling tried to save her. On the other hand, Wu Xing's eyes were injured by Dong Fang. There, Dong Fang asks Ling who is the woman he loves, and finally, he answers that Dong Fang will always be in his heart. Satisfied with his answer, she let go of his hand and pushed him over the abyss. After that, Ling could only cry over the death of the woman he loved. Wu Xing then showed Ying and Ling the sunflower scripture, which indicated that the condition for mastering the technique was genital castration. Wu Xing himself admitted that he did not have the guts to study the book, then smashed the book to pieces. After that, he returned to being the leader of the Sun Moon sect and forgave his subordinates who had previously betrayed him. Not long after, Ling said he wanted to always be with Ying because he could not disappoint the woman who had done many things for him. However, he revealed that he was worried about Ying's father, who was thirsty for power. Unfortunately, Wu Xing heard his words, so Ling was imprisoned by him. Ying then sneaks in and frees Ling, but when she invites him to leave, he refuses. On the other hand, Yue was becoming more feminine by the day, even though he didn't realize it. He has also mastered the PZ Qi and Fa move and intends to burn the cloak containing the instructions for the move, but Zhang Zhe arrives and catches him. She was deeply disappointed in him and accused him of being a thief, even going so far as to slander Ling. Meanwhile, PZ hears the conversation, then Zhang Zhe asks Yue to stop practicing the move and makes him realize what his wife said. Then he threw the cloak out the window and was taken away by PZ. At first, PZ was excited because he got back his family's heirloom, but he was disappointed because the condition for mastering this technique was to have genitals castration. This makes him confused about whether to castrate him to avenge the death of his parents or to choose Ling Shan, whom he begins to love. Meanwhile, Lao seems to be monitoring Yue's movements and finally manages to steal the book of PZ Qian Fa and give it to Zuo. Knowing that Zuo was very happy and said he would practice this move before the meeting of the Five Sect Alliance was held. After long thinking, PZ castrated his genitals and practiced the PZ Chin Fa technique. Even he abandoned his wife, Ling Shan, on their first marriage night. After that, Ling Shan and her mother went shopping for clothes for PZ. So, they chose blue cloth for him and for her she chose red. However, when she got home, PZ chose red cloth because he liked it, which was also approved by his father-in-law, Yue. Seeing that, Zhang Zhe was shocked. The scene shifts, showing the meeting of the Five Sect Alliance plus the Shaolin monks who were also invited to discuss the plan to merge the five sects into one. So, some sects agreed with the proposal, but some rejected it. So that the five sects also acknowledged that the purpose of the merger was to unite, but now the problem was who would be the leader of the major sects. Then Zuo decided that the leader's election would be determined by a duel the next day. At night, Ling seems happy to see Ying again, but she warns him to be careful with Yue. The next day, Yue's hypocrisy was exposed. He pretended that he had no intention of fighting over the leader seat, but instead, Ling Shan came forward saying that she had learned the four moves of the other sects, having found the five sex carvings of the five sects in the Hua Mountain Cave. Soon after, Ling Shan went forward to fight and managed to win her first match. In the next round, she faced Muo Da with his loot sword, but he didn't seem serious against her, so she injured him. 
After that, Ling finally confronts Ling Shan, but he fights half-heartedly to respect Yue and the woman he once loved. Because of that, he gets stabbed by her sword. In the end, Zuo stepped up against Ling Shan and managed to defeat her with only one hand. He said he would be a great sect leader if no one dared to go against him. Ling Shan then challenges Zuo to fight against her father, Yue, who deliberately did not put himself forward. After that, their battle began. They both used the PZ Chan Fa technique. Even so, Zuo is basically stronger than Yue. However, Yue is stronger only because he has been castrated so that he can have the opportunity to release his needle secret to blind Zuo's eyes. After that, Yue whispered to Zuo and said that if the book of PZ Qian Fa that lost all from him was a forgery, Yue would officially become the leader of a major sect. Meanwhile, PZ approaches Chang Hai to challenge him to a duel in the early hours of the morning. When night fell, he again met Chang Hai at the battle arena, where the North Hengshan sect nuns were resting. Piji then managed to paralyze Chang Hai and all the Qing Chen sect students, but Piji would not kill them but would terrorize them as a form of revenge for the death of his parents. Soon after, he killed Chang Hai's two students in front of his own eyes, then he terrorized Chang Hai again and attacked him at night with Ling Shan. Unfortunately, Ling Shan is cornered by Chang Hai's student, which makes Ying come to her aid because Ling looks worried for Ling Shan, while Piji ignores his wife instead. The next day Piji returns to terrorize Chang Hai in a tavern, but Feng appears and takes Ling Shan prisoner in front of Piji. Suddenly, the battle is inevitable, but when Piji stabs Feng, the poison in his body seeps out and causes Piji to become blind, and Chang Hai dies after being thrown with a sword by Piji. After that, Ying and Ling disguise themselves as villagers because she worries about Ling Shan. When they were seen holding hands, Ling said he wanted to live like ordinary citizens with Ying. Long story short, Ling and Ying followed Piji and Ling Shan, where Ling overheard their argument. Then Piji tells Ling Shan about Yue's rottenness, who deliberately approaches him from the start to get the Piji Qi and Fa book. Piji also tells how Yue took the book to slander Ling. In the end, Piji admits he is not a real man because he castrated his genitals to practice Piji Qi and Fa. This was also done by Yue, which made Ling Shan feel very devastated. Not long after, Lao arrives and invites Piji to work together to kill Yue. At that moment, Ling Shan realizes that Ling is not the one who killed Lao because he is still alive. Before leaving, Piji asks Ling Shan who she sides with, her husband or her father, but Ling Shan replies that she wants to become a nun so she can be close to Ling. Hearing this, Piji stabs her, and Ling comes out of hiding while Piji runs away with Lao. Soon after, Ling and Ying tend to help Ling Shan. After a few days, she disappears, so they rush to find her. It turned out that Ling Shan was trying to hurt herself. Fortunately, Ling manages to persuade her not to do that. After that, he accompanies her every day and makes Ying decide to leave. Then Ying wrote a letter, feeling that Ling still loved Ling Shan. After reading the letter, Ling and Ling Shan decide to go to the Sun Moon Sect, but when they get there, they are lied to by Ying's bodyguards, who say that Ying will not return there. After returning to the Sun Moon Sect headquarters, Ying was examined by a doctor because she had drunk Dong Fang's poison in the past, and the doctor said that her life would not be long, so she decided to go look for Ling. When Ying managed to find Ling and Ling Shan, who were also looking for her, she did not dare to meet them. Feeling that the search is unsuccessful, Ling decides to take Ling Shan to the Sung Shan sect to find Piji first. After arriving at Sung Shan sect, Ling Shan met Piji, where she said she wanted to forget their past and start everything over again. Piji then admitted that he deliberately stabbed her so that she would stay away from him, who was blind and useless. Then they finally agreed to leave martial arts and start a new life. When Ling is about to leave, Piji hears footsteps and attacks him. Fortunately, Ling Shan blocks that, resulting in an attack from Piji. Afterward, he runs away from there. Soon after, the dying Ling Shan orders Ling to take care of Piji for her sake, then she dies. After burying Ling Shan, Ling decides to stay near her grave for a while, accompanied by Ying. Meanwhile, in Huashan sect, Zhang Zhe informs Yue that Piji has killed Chang Hai, and their daughter is currently injured. Then Zhang Zhe invites Yue to rescue their daughter. However, he is more interested in fusing the five sects than finding his daughter. In the middle of the forest, Ling saw several Sun Moon sect warriors setting a trap beside Zhang Zhe to catch Yue. After the soldiers left, Ying ran towards Zhang Zhe but was stopped by Yue, who punched her, then asked where his daughter was. Shortly after, Ling appeared when Yue was about to hurt Ying, then said that Ling Shan had been killed by Piji, her husband. However, Yue did not believe his words, so Ying said that Yue was cunning and willing to castrate his own genitals to learn Pizi Qi and Fa. Hearing that, he was furious, and a fight ensued. Unfortunately, Yue ran out of strength and fainted. It didn't take long for Zhang Zhe to wake up, then Ling said that Ling Shan was killed by Piji. Hearing that, she asked Ling to kill Piji, but he again said Ling Shan's last message was to take care of Piji. Zhang Zhe, who heard about it, finally decided to die. Yue, who just realized this, was given Sun Moon Sect's signature poison by Ying, then she threatened Yue not to attack them. Afterward, Yue asked Ling to take care of his wife's body, and then he left. 
After that, Ling buried Zhang Zhe next to Ling Shan's tomb, where he was fed up with all the conflicts in the martial world and decided to go with Ying. But on the way, Ling met Bo Guang and Feng Huan, who reported that all the nuns had been kidnapped by Yue and taken to Hua Shan's sect. Soon after, they decided to save them and then split up. Bo Guan, with his keen sense of smell, managed to find the nuns. Meanwhile, Yue imagined and invited the other sect leaders to see their respective carvings in Hua Shan Cave. But suddenly, Piji and Zuo come to attack them all and intend to kill Yue for revenge. Not long after, Ling enters the cave after hearing the commotion, but Yue uses it to attack him and escapes. Then he fought with Zuo and his students. Finally, Ling finished them off with his Duchi Chiyu Bai technique. Meanwhile, Piji is not killed by Ling according to his promise to Ling Shan. He only cuts Piji's leg tendon so he can no longer fight. When they left the cave, Ling and Ying were caught and tied to a tree. Suddenly, Yue threatens to kill Ying if she doesn't give her the antidote, but she says it's fake poison. Then Ling manages to let go of the rope and returns to fight with Yue, the teacher he once respected. Afterward, Ling manages to get ahead of Yue by using his Sisinga technique. Unfortunately, when Yue begs him to stop his technique, Yue is stabbed by Yi Lin to avenge the death of her master, Ding Yi. Then, Ling cried over the death of Yue, who had taken care of him since childhood, because no matter how bad his behavior was, Ling was still indebted to him. On the other hand, Wu Xing was about to attack the Five Sect Alliance but received a report that all the leaders of the Five Sect Alliance had died, leaving Ling alone. Soon after, Ling met Wu Xing and was again invited to join the Sun Moon Sect, but he refused again, which made Wu Xing angry. Then Ying held back her father's anger to not hurt Ling. The scene moves and shows Ying apparently complaining of a headache, so she starts hallucinating. Afterward, she asks her father to kill her because she can't stand her headaches. Hearing that, Wu Xing knocked her unconscious and called for a doctor. The doctor then suggested Wu Xing channel his energy into Ying to withstand the symptoms of the poison. The scene then changes, showing Yi Lin and Bo Guang meeting an old lady who tells her to marry Ling. However, she realized that the old woman was her old sister, Dong Fang. After that, Yi Lin looked for Ling and said that Dong Fang was not dead. Hearing this, he rushed to meet Dong Fang. However, she did not want to meet him yet. Dong Fang then remembers when she managed to survive after falling from a cliff, then went to Hua Mountain and met Feng Qing instead. Then she said that she had quit the world of martial arts but could not stop loving Ling. Not long after, Dong Fang fainted, and Feng Qing, who realized she was seriously injured, channeled his energy into her to save her. After that, Feng Qing advises Dong Fang not to lie about her feelings, who love Ling. For this reason, she purposely does not call Ling so that he can forget his love. One month later, Ling was seen discussing with Fang Zheng to get ready to fight against the Sun Moon sect. Meanwhile, in Sun Moon sect, Wu Xing, who was targeting Shaolin, told his subordinates that Shaolin had fallen into his trap, which was overheard by Ying. Ying then ordered Wen Sheng to deliver a letter from her to Ling, but when he was about to leave, Wen Sheng was stopped by Wu Xing, who already knew Ying's relationship with Ling. Wen Sheng then explained that he intended to meet Ling to ask Ling to surrender because he would not betray Wu Xing, and he had burned the letter from Ying. Not long after, Wen Sheng arrived at the North Hangshan sect and told Ling that the poison in Ying's body was still there. Hearing that, Ling decided to go to the Sun Moon sect to take her away from there. When he managed to meet Ying, Wu Xing came to block Ling and said that he could not bring his daughter with him if he did not want to join the Sun Moon sect. However, Ling still insisted on bringing Ying, and a fight ensued. Fortunately, Ling manages to bring Ying down the cliff, but Wu Xing tries to catch her. Then the fight continues as long as they go down the cliff until the three of them fall down. Ling, lying down, was about to be finished off by Wu Xing. Even though his daughter had begged him, Wu Xing didn't seem to hold back his intention. Then Dong Fang appeared and attacked him from behind to die. Afterward, she left them. The next day, Ying held her father's funeral and accompanied Ling to North Hangshan sect. Then, he appointed a new leader of the North Hangshan sect to replace himself so that he could live freely as he wished. Before leaving, Ling and Ying caught Yi Lin praying for their happiness, so he thanked Yi Lin when they left. Then they met Wen Xing at Wu Xing's tomb, and Ying handed over the position of leader of the Sun Moon sect to replace her father with Wen Xing. Currently, Ling and Ying had fulfilled their wish of becoming ordinary citizens and leaving the conflicted martial world, but unfortunately, the poison in her body still stayed. One night, Ling grabbed a hair tie. Then he realized that the hair tie belonged to Dong Fang and chased her to ask for an antidote to Ying's poison. Soon after, he attacks Dong Fang, and she receives the attack as revenge for her actions that poisoned Ying. Afterward, she confirms that the poison has no antidote. The misunderstanding between Ling and Dong Fang was so tragic that she again asked him whether he really loved her, but Ling just closed his eyes as an answer. Dong Fang, who understands, decides to say goodbye and says she will not appear again in his life. When she had only taken a few steps, she returned and kissed Ling and returned his hair tie as a parting gift. The next day, Ling and Ying eventually marry, but she almost dies from the poison on the first night. Ling, desperate because all the women he loved died, decided to die. 
Soon after, when Ling wanted to draw his sword, the doctor said that he had managed to find an antidote to Ying's poison. The scene shifted, showing Ling and Ying's wedding, which was attended by guests ranging from Ling's brothers from small sects, nuns, and Shaolin monks. Then he asked again about the poison in his wife's body, and the doctor said that the poison in her body had completely disappeared. So, the doctor remembers his meeting with Dong Fong, who said there is a way to cure Ying's poison, namely to give the heart of an immune person with the poison, which is none other than Dong Fong's heart. After that, Dong Fong asked the doctor to remove her heart and throw her body into the icy lake. Hearing that, he fulfilled her last wish. The next day, Ling and Ying visit Ling Shan and Zhang Zhe's tombs to report that he is married. Then he said he had already kept his promise to take care of Piji. To make him safe, Ling has imprisoned Piji so no one can harm him. The series closes by showing Ling and Ying playing music on the ice lake. He asks why Ying wants to play music at that place, and she answers that she doesn't know why she wants to go to this place. Afterward, Ying cried because she felt sad in that place and remembered the moments with Ling that weren't actually her moments. Then he took Ying home so as not to be too long in that place. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the icy lake, Dong Fong opened her eyes and smiled. The series ends. This series teaches us not to meddle in other people's affairs because it will only make things difficult for us, like Ling, who is always in trouble because he interferes too much in other people's affairs. Ling is not only a martial arts expert but also a master at getting himself into trouble.